first the plot to kidnap one of our region's most popular sporting personalities. World champion boxer Johnny Nelson has spent the last four months under close police guard after undercover detectives foiled the plans of a Sheffield-based gang to harm or kidnap him. Well, our reporter Yunus Muller is outside Johnny's home in North Derbyshire. Yunus. It has been a terrible few months for Johnny Nelson and his wife Deborah, during which time police have carried out surveillance here at their home. In fact, security cameras are still installed here. The plot, the kidnap plot, first emerged around four months ago. Now, friends may have perceived their behavior erratic at times during this time, but they were just taking uh, precautions on the advice of police. Training just a few months ago, Johnny Nelson seemed focused and relaxed. But within weeks, he was about to face the biggest fight of his life, a kidnap plot against him and his family. One of only few people to know was Brendan Ingle, his trainer and friend. I think he's handling it very well, but he was, he was on edge all the time. Every day he'd come in here and we'd arrange the different times he was coming into the train and probably half an hour one way, an hour another. So uh, he just went on for months. An underworld gang planned to kidnap the boxer from his home or cause him physical harm. Police instigated a covert operation after being tipped off. The four-month operation included surveillance cameras at his home and the use of tracking devices, installing a panic button and promising an immediate call-out to emergency calls, and officers keeping an eye on his movements. Johnny Nelson and his family during this time were sworn to secrecy and tried to maintain a normal lifestyle. Today, South Yorkshire Police confirmed the investigation is still ongoing and are still in close contact with him. Both South Yorkshire Police and Derbyshire Police have been reluctant to reveal the full details of the operation that they carried out uh, in case they jeopardise further operations. Speaking to the Nelsons themselves this morning, they are planning to spend a few days away from home, uh, but it's hoped that they are now safe. Indeed, thanks very much, Yannis. He's a world boxing champion with thousands of fans, but as Johnny Nelson has exclusively revealed to Look North, he was knocked sideways when he realised a kidnap threat against him was deadly serious. Police today confirm that for the last six months, they've been part of an ongoing operation to offer round-the-clock protection to Johnny and his family. Advised to change his life, the champion, who also reports for the BBC's Inside Out programme, has been unable to confide in anyone but his trainer about his ordeal until now. Tom Ingle has the full story for BBC Look North. Come on, Oliver, come on. Johnny Nelson at home this morning, apparently a man relaxed about serious threats to kidnap him. The world boxing champion has lived almost a double life since he was told of the threats. On one hand, trying to keep up appearances, on the other, changing his life from day to day to keep his unseen enemies on their toes. I was approached by uh, the CID um, uh, that there was, there was a, a problem. I wasn't quite sure what it was and when I was actually told that I uh, was sat in the kitchen here, me and my wife, and I laughed because I thought this is ridiculous, this can't be true. It's something you, you read in the papers about somebody else or you see on the TV. And then when I saw the helicopters hovering above the house taking photographs and the uh, armoured police around the back you know, doing diagrams of how they get in and out of the house. Then I realised it was serious. You are a six foot three boxer, but nevertheless, this must have been a frightening situation to suddenly find out there was a threat. Did did you feel any fear? Well, probably as a fighter, my, when I get once I feel free, I, I fear um, it produces anger. So I was more angry than anything else uh, that somebody had had, had one even consider doing this to me. It wasn't until I'd sat back and realised. Um, how, how severe and how, uh, how detailed they did on security on me. I, I realised this is a really serious thing, Johnny, you know, somebody... Because at the end of the day, uh, it's not as though I can't say anything. What are they going to do if they get me? They've got to do one... I'm not going to let it roll over and, and say, yeah, do what you want to do. I'm not going to let that happen. So, as far as I'm concerned, I was threatened with my life. The World Cruiserweight Champion has been a long and close friend of his trainer, Brendan Ingle. Besides his wife, Brendan was the only person who knew of the threat. It has been a straining and difficult time. It was very hard, but because as I said, you know, I, I've got a life and I do, I do a lot of stuff. I box, I, I do a lot of other things as well. But these things were all put on hold. And um, so my wife, she was very, very strong. Um, uh, and Brendan, they were just, they were perfect. How do you rationalise now the last six months? I think it's petty. I think it's 
childish. So for it to get to this extreme where people are getting jealous and people want to get you out of the equation, I think it's so, so stupid. Um, you know, maybe when I'm 50 years old, and these individuals are 50 years old as well, they think it was a silly thing we tried to do. Well, people are trying to be little gangsters, and they just they can't do that. It's just stupid. Well, Tom's in our Sheffield studio now. Tom, you've obviously spoken to, uh, to Johnny. What's his mood, would you say? Is it one of anger? Well, Christy, you or I know that Johnny is normally a very cheerful, cheerful upbeat character. He's known in the sport... As the, as the Mr. Nice Guy of boxing. I think what's annoyed him most is this double life. The fact he might have had to lie to friends because he can't confide in them, and he's had to change his life. The police were telling him he had to jog in a different route, couldn't go to certain uh, functions or whatever because they wanted to keep the people who were hatching this plot on their toes. Yes, you mentioned the police. What have they had to say tonight? Well, they wouldn't be interviewed directly, but we have got a few statements from them. They do confirm they were part of an ongoing operation uh, which included surveillance around the clock for Mr Nelson's family, but they didn't want to go into any details. When I visited the house today, there were new alarms and cameras, so this was a threat being taken very, very seriously indeed. Um, they say they've not questioned anyone. It's a covert operation, and it is still ongoing and has been for several months. We want to remove the threat, the threat and uh, we are, have done, and we are less worried about the threat now. I mean, it's an incredible story. It's like something out of a movie. Yeah, indeed, uh, Johnny said in, in my report there that uh, when, he, when he first heard of this, he actually laughed. He thought, well, well, don't, don't be silly. This, this can't happen to me. I mean, he's not exactly a, an easy target, is he, a six-foot-three boxer? But as the operation went on, he found it more and more serious. We, we've had a little bit of reaction coming into the Sheffield newsroom here this evening for Look North. Uh, we've heard from Brendan Ingle, who was the trainer that, of course, Johnny confided in. He said, uh, I, I knew there was something not quite right. It's just been a nightmare. And Frank Warren, who's Johnny Nelson's promoter, said, I'm concerned for him. Uh, I understand the police are looking after him, but it's a worrying time for him and his family. Tom Ingle, thank you very much. Well, it's a week ago since we revealed that world champion cruiserweight boxer Johnny Nelson had been leading a double life after police uncovered an underworld conspiracy to kidnap him. Well, after living under round-the-clock protection for six months, Johnny finally went public on Look North about his family's ordeal. Well, now he's started to put his life back together and he's with me now. We have been wondering what you've been doing for the past 12 months and, and, and now we know why you've been so quiet. Well, a lot of people were asking me when you're fighting. I couldn't actually give them a straight answer. And uh, obviously, this, because of all this stuff that was going on, we couldn't sort things out fight-wise. But now they've told me I'm fighting on November the 18th in Sheffield. So uh, it's all good. It's all back on track again. How long is it since you fought in Sheffield? November. Interested? No, well, it was November wow. since I last boxed, but it's probably two years since I last boxed. So in that's Sheffield. quite a homecoming then after a oh, traumatic yeah. 12 months. I'm quite looking forward to it. You know, it's, it's a break from it all. It's back to reality now. So back to training hard? Uh, I'm training very hard and uh, I, I'm really excited about it as well. You know, I had to put my life on hold in regards to all of this, but now it's, it's out in the open. I'm not really that stressed about it. I'm, I'm a little bit shocked now because everybody's as shocked as I was initially. But so when you go down the streets in Sheffield, presumably people, are they starting to sort of shout out, you know, you're still there, you've not been kidnapped? I mean, it's obviously, it's sort of, you know, you, you knew about it, nobody else did. Yeah, I, I've got the one or two jokes. I'm not good at reciting jokes, but yeah, I've had one or two jokes about it. But, um, but you know, everybody said, serious. yeah, very serious. And everybody was um, you're saying, are you OK? And, you know, I'd forget for a while because it's been since Christmas this mm. has been going on with me. It's, it's all news to me. Uh, and I've got used to the police being around. I've got used to being followed all the time by the police. It's all news, and so now it's public. It's news to everybody else. Okay, well, you're back training. You're going to fight. Who are you going to fight? A guy called Alexander Petrovic, uh, a, a, a German. He's six foot five, young guy. He's 23 years old. Oh he, my he's God, unbeaten. He's 23. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to say I'm old. I didn't say a word. <laughs> uh, so it'll be it'll be exciting, especially for Sheffield. Yeah, it'd be a good match. But you've also been doing other things as well. I mean, now, you know, you, you're back on. You've, you've been doing something very strange about videos and, and games <laughs> and things. Well, uh, PlayStation have a game called Rocky. <coughs> and uh, I did the, the uh, animation for that one. And we've just been doing the, the new Rocky 2, which should be out uh, at Christmas time or just after Christmas. Um, and it's, it's been two days of hard slug. Uh, I don't want to get a proper job. It's hard work. Well, no, bas basically, they're going to have uh, another month or so of hard slog, but we wish you well. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm sure you'll do fine.